Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well we've got a great effect for you today. We've got a list here, when I hover over it it's going to start scrolling down. I know your eyes aren't going funny, that background is changing colour slowly. And when we get back off of it, it's going to scroll back up to the top. Really easy to do. I've got to write one tiny bit of CSS code today, but don't let that put you off. Any CSS I write, I'll put below the video as usual. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. And let's go down to where we want to work. I've got a section, the blue tab here. Inside I've got a row, the green tab. I've got my little list in the left hand column there. This will work with any module. I'm just having to do it with a blurb module for the icon and the list. You could do it with a call to action and have a button at the bottom. So I'm going to open this up. Divi comes as standard with all these modules, plenty enough to build just about any site. If you've got WooCommerce installed, it'll also give you an extra dozen modules to display your products. Okay, well, let's just grab a little blurb module. Call it what you want. I'll move this over so you can see what's going on. Putting it in there, let's put an L on that. Obviously put your content in here. This is where I'm going to put my list. I'll just leave that in there. I've got a list up here at lorem ipsum or lipsum.com. I'm going to copy that, a bit of dummy text. I'm going to drop down, I'm going to paste that in there. And there it is, that's made that pretty long, that little column right there. We've done a similar thing earlier on this week with a different effect. Okay, so we've got that there. Let's just style this to make it a little bit more interesting. I'm going to use an icon. Like I say, you can use any module you like for this. I just happen to be using the blurb. So down below, the content, image and icon. I'm going to use the icon, so I'll switch this little switch to on. And let's just use the same up type arrow. Let's use that one this time, perhaps. If you want your module to link somewhere, the title can link to one URL and the whole module can link to another URL or you can put the same in for both if you want to. I'm not going to put a link in. Always best practice when using links. If you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking off site, open it in a new tab so your site stays open. Okay, well let's give this a background color just for a bit of fun. Backgrounds, you can give them a color, gradient, image, background video, background pattern, or background mask. Let's just give it a simple color. Great. I'm going to move over to my design tab now. Image and icon, all I'm going to do is make it white so it stands out against the background there. You've got all kind of different options here. You can place it on the left if you want to. That's great for doing little icon lists and what have you, but I'm going to keep mine on the top. And of course you can size it how you want and align it how you want. I'm going to leave mine just as it is there. Let's roll on down. Okay, the text, I'm going to pop that all on the left side as it is, so I'll leave that just as it is. You can pop it in the middle, right, or justify it. I'm going to make it light in color. It'll all turn white when I do that so we can see it. Great. But as you can see, it's buffered up against the sides. So I'm actually going to give it a bit of spacing to fix that. If you want to, you can style your body text and your title text separately there. If you go into the title, let's capitalize it. Make it semi-bold or bold or however you want. And as with all things Divi, you've got a huge amount of fonts to choose from. To audition one, just roll over it. It'll give you an example of that, what that particular font does. I'm going to leave mine on the default there. And you've got exactly the same options for the body text also. So let's go down to my spacing now. I'm going to give it a bit of padding. Let's give it 50 pixels on the top. Just put in the 50. It'll put in the pics. Hit the chain. It'll do the opposite side view. And let's give it, say, 30 left and right. Great. Well, that works for me. So we've got our long old list there. Well, it's actually not as long as I thought it was, but it's fairly long. Okay, I'm not going to give it a border. You can give it round corners and borders and box shadows and things if you want to. And I'm not going to do any filters. So 
I'm going to call that complete now. So what we need to do is restrict the actual amount that we're going to view. Give it a fixed height, which is what I did with our column on the left there. To do that, just click on in between these two. We'll go into the row, green tab. We're working on the right hand column, column number two. I'm going to go over to the advanced. This is where we've got to write a little bit of code. And the code I write, we'll put in the custom CSS here in the main element. Very simple, one simple line, height, colon, whatever height you want. Let's try 350, may not be enough. 350 pixels or pixels, semicolon. And it's brought the bottom bar up, but of course our list is way taller than that, so it's spilling out of our column. Now I could just put overflow hidden here, or if we close back our custom CSS, Divi has kindly let us do it visually here. If we go down to visibility, we've got horizontal and vertical overflow. If we turn the horizontal on, or to hidden, there we go. And if you want to, you can leave a little slider there so they can slide up manually. That's a cool little feature. Or if you want to hide it completely and just have it do it automatically on hover, which we're going to do today, we'll hide this one also. So we'll turn the vertical overflow to hidden also. Now you see it's only letting us have so much of the lifts. It's a bit shorter than the other one. So you can go back into your custom CSS there and adjust it. You'll be able to see it now. I think the other one was perhaps 75. There we go. And obviously make yours as big or as small as you want. OK, well, let's save our settings, column settings, back into the row. We'll save the settings there. Now let's create our hover effect. We'll go back into our module, dark tab for the module. I'm going to go to the design tab and down to spacing. Now, common to most Divi modules, if you hover over the dark writing, you're going to see some little icons appear. We want to affect the margin, so go to the thing that you want to affect, like I say in our case the margin here. If there's a little arrow there, click on it. And it will give us two versions. We can have one set of settings for the desktop when the mouse is not on it, and another set when the mouse is on it. Hover, obviously. Okay, for desktop, zero margin. There's none in there at the moment, but we're going to start at zero, so then when we go to hover it'll have something to start from. Now when it hovers, I'm going to give it negative 100% on the top, which will pull it all the way to the bottom of the lift. So I'm going to just type in negative 100%. If it puts in pixels for you, you can just select it and write in percent over the top. And as you can see, that's taken us all the way to the bottom of our list there. So on desktop, we're at the top of our list. There, we're on the bottom of our list. Now the time it takes to get from top to bottom, by default with Divi, is 300 milliseconds, which is pretty quick. I like to slow it down for a bit of drama, especially give people a chance to actually read things as they're going past. So let's go over to our advanced here. We can go down to transitions. There's the default 300 milliseconds. You can slide it up all the way. That'll take it up to 2000, which is two seconds. I don't think that's going to be long enough. I want mine to be like five seconds. So I'm just going to select the two and change it from a two to a five. We've got five seconds there. So don't be restricted by these sliders. You can type in any value that you want there. Don't want any delay. You want it to happen as soon as they put their mouse on it. And the transition speed curve I'm going to use for this is actually linear. They're all slightly different. Some work better than others in certain situations. And for this situation, because I want them to be able to read it, it wants to be the same speed all the way up and all the way down. So I'm going to leave it on linear. Great. Now, just for a little bit of fun, let's have the background color change as well over that time period. So we can go back to our content, background. There's our color. And remember, we can just go up here over the dark writing, hit the little arrow. The desktop is going to be purple. Let's change it to something crazy like red on hover. And it'll go from the purple 
to the red over that time period. Okay, well let's save and we should be good to go. Save draft or publish if you're ready. Now let's exit the visual builder. There we go. Go on down, there's our little list on the right hand side there. When I hover over, it's gonna take five seconds to get to the bottom. Five seconds to get back up to the top and it's gonna change from the red to the purple there. And we've used the linear speed curve so it sort of stays the same speed all the way up and all the way down allowing people to read it a little bit easier i think the one on the left we did for seven seconds and as you see if you put a longer speed in there it just takes longer to do it that's fine so whatever works for you but that's a nice little effect to have on your site only one tiny bit of code anybody needs to copy it i'll put it below the video as usual so I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.